Oh my. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. A Kobe Bryant patch autograph Woo! number four of ten. How's it going everyone and welcome back to my channel Kobe Cards. We are in the final part of our three-part discussion around Kobe being the youngest All-Star Game starter in the 1997-98 NBA All-Star Game. In the first part, I talked about the numbers behind Kobe's age and being the youngest All-Star Game starter. In video number two, I talked about the selection and the voting process that brought him there. And today, we are going to talk about how that game played out. We'll get to all that soon enough, but for now, let's start by going into the Kobe capsule to see today's card. All right. Today, we have a 1998-99 Upper Deck Ovation card. This set was released in early 1999, and it was an extremely small set. The set was only 80 cards, and consisted of 70 veteran players and 10 rookies. So Kobe in this set was number 29, which would have been in the veterans part, uh, which was between numbers 1 and 70 of the set. As far as the design goes, um, I do really like the design. I definitely say it's above average. I did like when Upper Deck uh, used to make their cards embossed with the NBA leather feel to it. I'm not sure how much uh, it works with the foil in the center, but overall, it's a pretty unique card and a pretty good design. As far as the image goes, I was able to determine exactly which game this was from. Uh, the giveaways were the number 44 on the player's jersey guarding Kobe, the fact that it was in a way game, uh, and that the opponents are wearing white, and then just barely, I'm not sure if you could tell, you see half of the letter E above the 44 on the opponent's jersey, which says Mavericks to me, and especially when you turn the card over, you catch a glimpse right there of Sean Bradley. So, what I was able to figure out is that this game was the Los Angeles Lakers versus Dallas Mavericks on April 14th, 1998. Surprisingly, that is the only game that matches all of the criteria of Kobe facing against Sean Bradley in Dallas. So, simple as that. And for this game itself, uh, one of the ironic things, I guess you would say, is that both Kobe and Sean Bradley fouled out in this game. Kobe ended this game with 19 points and four rebounds in 28 minutes. And it was Shaquille O'Neal uh, who took advantage of the Mavs' bigs foul trouble, mainly on Sean Bradley, who fouled out of the game. And with Sean Bradley being seven foot six, uh, and fouling out, that left a lot of room for Shaq to go to work. And Shaq ended with 34 points and 7 rebounds in a 111-95 to win for the Lakers. Alright, on to the back of the card. So we already saw, uh, you see Sean Bradley in there, there is no height weight on this, and we are just going to go straight into the passage. Almost single-handedly bringing Showtime back to the Great Western Forum in 1997-98, the Lakers' Kobe Bryant emerged as one of the game's most exciting and popular young performers. The 19-year-old guard made league history along the way by becoming the youngest player ever to be named a starter in the NBA All-Star Game. All right. The story here is more of the same that we've been seeing, so no new information here. For those of you who don't understand the Showtime reference, though, they're referring to the Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar era in Lakers history, where they played an exciting run-and-gun style of basketball, relied a lot on fast breaks and transition points, and won five championships together. 
We talked in the last video about Kobe being exciting and popular with the fans, and that's sort of how the Showtime reference translates. A lot of people found Kobe very exciting, quite naturally, and that is why the fans voted him into the All-Star game. But now, the time has come. We've talked about Kobe's age, we've talked about the voting that put Kobe in this moment, and now it's time to dive into the game itself, both from the historical importance perspective as well as who won the game, who was the MVP, what happened. Let's get into it. The 1998 All-Star Game occurred on February 8, 1998 at Madison Square Garden in New York. The head coaches were George Carl of the Seattle Supersonics for the Western Conference and Larry Bird of the Indiana Pacers for the Eastern Conference. Yes, Larry Bird was a head coach in this game while he was coaching the Indiana Pacers. Notable players in the game, there were seven first-time selections. Kobe Bryant being one of the seven, who was the youngest selection and the youngest starter. And Tim Duncan was also selected, and this was his rookie season. There was also Nick Van Exel, Steve Smith, Antoine Walker, Rick Smits, and Jason Williams, all first-time selections. Michael Jordan, this was his 12th selection of what would be 14 total. Carl Malone was selected for the 11th time of 14 total as well. And this was Shaquille O'Neal's sixth selection. And it was actually his first time playing as a Laker as he sat out in the 1997 game due to an injury. The Lakers also had a franchise high four All-Stars playing in the game. Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Nick Van Exel, and Eddie Jones were all Western Conference All-Stars. Some additional information about the game would be that this was the last All-Star game of the millennium. The 1999 game would not occur due to the lockout. It also marked an end of an era for a lot of people, as 10 rostered players in this game would never appear in another All-Star game. Those 10 people were Nick Van Exel, Mitch Richmond, Vin Baker, Anthony Hardaway, Sean Kemp, Tim Hardaway, Steve Smith, Glenn Rice, Rick Smits, and Jason Williams. Lastly, and most importantly, this was the first All-Star game ever to feature both Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. All eyes were on Kobe and Jordan the entire night. Both of them were interviewed five times throughout the game. Kobe Bryant, during the game, bodied up Michael Jordan as much as he could. He really wanted to challenge Jordan and put it all on the line for everyone to see. During the first interview that they had with Michael Jordan at the end of the first quarter, his reaction when asked about the one-on-one -on -one matchup, his response was, well, I mean, he's coming at me. I think that's the approach. He's being very, very aggressive, and he's playing defense, so it looks like I've got to play defense. And that's really what it came down to. Kobe wanted to challenge Jordan, and Jordan knew he had to step up. And he even admitted it was a pride thing. If Kobe was going to body him up and play really hard defense in an all-star game, well, Michael Jordan was not going to back down, and he was going to do the same. As far as the game went, Kobe Bryant left everything out there, both offensively and defensively. He showcased a 360-degree dunk. He had an alley-oop dunk. He had a putback dunk off of a miss. He hit two three-pointers. He even had an around-the-back fake pass to himself into a sky hook. No, this is not a joke. I meant that exact thing happened. An around-the-back fake pass to himself into a sky hook that had the entire crowd go wild and the announcers stunned, saying they had never seen anything like that before in basketball, better yet in all-star game or any type of game. You would have to see it to believe it. Through the first three quarters, Kobe even outscored Michael Jordan 18-17, to and Kobe ended the game with 18 points, 6 rebounds, 1 assist, and 2 steals in 22 minutes, which was a Western Conference high for points. He led the way for the West. Throughout the game, if you actually watched the game on TV, 
you would have seen that throughout all of the game, they were showing little flashes on the screen tracking Kobe versus Jordan statistics. Even later in the game, they showed Kobe and Jordan's face next to each other with their two stat lines with the title MVP candidates. They were talking about which one of those two players was going to win the MVP in that game. Kobe, again, being in his first ever All-Star Game appearance, fighting Michael Jordan head-to-head -head for a chance to win an MVP. But Michael Jordan, well, he could not be stopped by Kobe in this game. Jordan himself was hitting baseline fadeaway jumpers, including an and one where Kobe fouled him and he finished the play. He was hitting up and unders. He was finishing finger roll layups and heavily contested jump shots with Kobe in his face, man to man. He was shooting right over Kobe in his eye and draining shots. The thing about the game is though, the East dominated this game. They dominated ever since the first quarter, and in the fourth quarter, they especially dominated. Even though Kobe had outscored Michael Jordan 18-17 to at the end of three quarters, Kobe actually didn't play the last 18 minutes of the game. So he didn't play the last six minutes of the third quarter, nor did he play any of the 12 minutes in the fourth quarter. With that being said, that left Michael Jordan alone to seal the game and the victory for the Eastern Conference. Michael Jordan ended the game with 23 points, eight assists, six rebounds, and three steals in 32 minutes. So he did end up playing 10 more minutes than Kobe, and he bested Kobe on his way to his third All-Star Game MVP trophy. Remember, Kobe Bryant owns the record with four MVPs, and Jordan finished his career with three. So this game would be the final time where Michael Jordan won an MVP All-Star Game trophy. If you want to see some of the highlights from this game and see some of the things that I'm talking about and some of those exciting plays that really made this game one for the ages, I'm going to leave a link to the highlights of this game, at least of the Jordan versus Kobe part of it, in the description so that after this video you can go click on that and see for yourself just how amazing it was. As always, the card that we talked about today is going to be uploaded to my Instagram and Twitter, at Kobe Capsule, where you can see all of the cards we've talked about on this channel. And if you're enjoying my videos and my tribute to Kobe, I hope you consider subscribing so that you can follow along as we continue our journey to remember and celebrate the life and career of Kobe Bryant. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time with more Kobe cards.